You know, it's been a while since any of us had to go to a store to pick up a copy of the latest movie. Remember going to a PCO or booth to make a phone call? Or if you want a real throwback, how many of you remember writing handwritten letters or notes? A time when the only emojis were hand-drawn smileys and hearts. Or sending your camera roll for developing so that you could actually see the pictures you've taken. Fast forward to today, the smartphone is not just a part of our life, they could well be an extension of our arms. From doing basically everything we do with one touch to often doing those anyway without even needing any input at all. It's a very different world where we are served a beautiful plate of food. We first take a photo of it instead of digging into that food. I mean, how many of us do it, right? We add 20 emojis at the end of our LOLs and record multiple videos of that puppy. We see just because that puppy is just so cute. But have you ever really given it some serious thought? How this thin slab of glass and metal in your hand actually pulls off so much magic? It's of course the processor inside the smartphone that does it all. But what is this processor we keep talking about? I mean, what does it really look like? It's there deep inside your phone. What does it contain? How is it actually built? Just how small is this marvel of engineering? Actually, you may have heard that good things come in small packages. Well, that package is really small and really thin. You see, a smartphone processor is made of billions of transistors and each of these transistors is a mere seven nm. What's even more fascinating is this tiny piece of silicon houses billions of transistors and is responsible for everything our smartphones actually do. It has components like the CPU, which is the real brain behind our smartphones, the GPU, which is the graphic processor unit, which handles graphics during your gaming sessions and everything else. Now, there's even an image processing unit whose job is to convert numbers and code from the camera into pictures and videos that we all actually love. Now, one company that is leading the charge in processor technology is Qualcomm, which develops the Snapdragon brand of mobile platforms. Did you know that a lot of this development happens right here in our backyard in India? Qualcomm has development centers in Hyderabad and Bangalore and employs more than 10,000 engineers to work on these very high-tech developments. So take a seat and join me on a wonderful journey inside your smartphone. <music>We did something very, very interesting. We went out on the streets and spoke with all of you to find out how well versed you are with your smartphone. Key components are battery, screen, fingerprint sensor. Then there will be a motherboard. The fingerprint touches there. Camera, the processor. There's the display, there's a battery, there's a camera. I'm sure billions. <laughs> millions. 50 lakhs. Billion lines only. It will be millions of, more than like a 10 million lines of code, I think. Close to two years or something. Around six to eight months. Six months. Maybe six months a year. So I'm guessing it takes less than a year for them. Today we have a different format. We have two people joining us. First, Shashi Reddy, Vice President Engineering, Qualcomm India Private Limited, who manages Qualcomm's Hyderabad Center. And Srini Madali, Vice President Engineering, Qualcomm India Private Limited, who manages Qualcomm's Bangalore Center. Fascinating, right? Let's hear from them about the overall journey of making a processor. Now, gentlemen, a couple of weeks ago, we learned that it takes about two years from the day you start planning a processor to the day handsets with that processor become available in the hands of consumers. Can you explain overall the process and why it takes so long and what all is involved in making of a processor? Great question, Raji. First of all, let me tell you that processor is a very constrained terminology in the context of Snapdragon platforms. What we deliver is a complete mobile platform. It's a system level solution that can meet the evolving needs of today's cell phone user. Today's cell phone is a lot more than a communication device. It's a convergence of multiple consumer devices. But mobile platform is a hardware software environment developed for smartphones, laptops, tablets, and other portable devices. The platform solution comprises of hardware parts such as CPU, GPU, NPU, signal processors, modem engine, AI engine, it also has wireless transceivers, 
RF parts, audio codecs, Wi-Fi connectivity, and quick charge. There is also the associated software components which go along with it. These are like communication system software for 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, wireless protocols, multimedia software for camera, audio, video, graphics, for gaming, along with the OS support software for Android and Windows, security software, AI engines for implementing on-device AI. All these components are packaged into a Snapdragon platform. Shashi talked about a very important point, the Snapdragon platform. I would like to add a bit more color to it. The Snapdragon platform is a very important in many ways for us, our customers and consumers. From Qualcomm point of view, we design hardware engines in Snapdragon chips to enable flexibility. The platform approach helps to meet our customer requirements and ability to scale and enhance the user experience without compromising their seamless capabilities expected by the phone users. For our customers, the handset developers, it provides great flexibility to differentiate the phone. They do so by choosing different hardware parts such as a display, camera, sensors to differentiate a phone model from the other models. The phone manufacturers leverage the hardware in Snapdragon chip to create superior user experience that consumers enjoy. As an example, camera or video quality in different light conditions or different scenarios, graphics capability to create realistic gaming experiences. So the Snapdragon platform gives a huge advantage to our customers and an added benefit to consumers. You know, this is so, so interesting. I could sit for hours and talk about all this. Okay, so what are the key stages and steps in this development? As you mentioned, Rajiv, the process starts two plus years before you see the devices in the market. It starts with a blueprint of uh, features required in the Snapdragon chipset to meet the future requirements of the consumers. Once we finalize the features, significant effort is involved to ensure the hardware engines are architected, designed and customized to meet high quality and performance requirements at a very low power. While the hardware engines are being developed, we build system level validation platforms to confirm the interoperability of the hardware engines. All hardware engines validated at the system level with software to ensure end-to-end -end platform requirements are met before enabling our customers deploy commercially. Just adding on what Srini outlined, the entire planning process of hardware and software development go hand in hand. It involves a detailed evaluation of various technologies to fit consumer experience, followed by a complex cycle of design, development, integration, and test. We also create reference designs that act as blueprints for our OEM partners. In the end, we work closely with the OEM partners to help them utilize these platforms meaningfully and successfully launch their products. Now you have a big setup in India. Can you tell us what all you do in India for India. A majority of the Snapdragon platforms develop out of our India design centers. Being in India, it helps us to connect and understand the local consumer requirements, features required, interests and network conditions. We use this knowledge to enable and support these features. Qualcomm is closely involved with mobile's ecosystem in India and as part of it, Qualcomm is the first to incorporate and enable navigation with Indian constellation Navic on multiple Snapdragon platforms. We work with UIDAI to create an early proof of concept for secure biometrics. Recently, we worked with the local ecosystem to develop first 4G feature phones for India. In addition to developing and enabling these features, our India teams work with operators to make sure that the modem on the devices and the networks are tuned properly. Be it the normal data communication, be it the voice call or Wi-Fi experience, we optimize it all. Further, while working with our OEM partners, we help them understand how to leverage the previous work and tune the device for performance and battery. Even the thermal experience on the handset due to different climatic conditions in India needs to be optimized. 
lot of that OEM support and optimizations and working with the operators happens out of our India development centers. Thank you so much, both of you. Wonderful having you on the show. Thank you.